Democracy Day in Nigeria is a national public holiday to commemorate the restoration of democracy from the military rule. June 12 is Nigeria's Democracy Day. This was not so until two years ago when Nigeria's president, Mohamed Buhari, declared on 6th of June 2018 that June 12 was now Nigeria's Democracy Day, which was before now celebrated annually on May 29. This is the second year in a row since that declaration, and the change carries a great symbol for a true democracy. The declaration by President Mohamed Buhari was done to commemorate the democratic election of Chief Moshud Kashimao Alawale Abiola on June 12, 1993, in what has been adjudged to be Nigeria's freest and fairest election. An icing on the cake was that he was also posthumously awarded the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, by President Mohamed Buhari. The story of June 12 isn't new to all. It is a memorable day in the history of Nigeria because for a long time Nigerians were disenfranchised from voting in their leaders. But now Nigerians knew their opinions mattered and votes count. On that day, an estimated 14 million Nigerians, irrespective of ethnic, religious, class and regional affiliations defied all odds to elect their president with the hope of ending eight years of military dictatorship. A good crop of Nigerians unanimously voted for one man in whom they found a savior, the chosen one they called him. However, the euphoria was short-lived. Who is the man behind the June 12 story? He is Chief Mashud Kashimao Olawale Abiola, also known as MKO, born 24th August 1937 in Abiokuta, Ogun State. Chief Mashud Abiola was a Nigerian business mogul, publisher, politician, and an aristocrat of the Egba clan who held the traditional title of Are Ona Kankafo, the 14th of Yoruba land. MKO Abiola ran for the presidency in 1993 under the Social Democratic Party SDP, and his closest running opponent was Al Aji Bashir Othman Tofa, flag bearer of the National Republican Convention, NRC. The outcome of the 1993 presidential elections came with its share of controversies and injustices. The sum up of the election result were never announced, but as it was apparent that Bashoru and Kiu Abiola was coasting home to a landslide victory with reports of over 8 million votes across 19 of the then 30 states, MKO was also said to have won almost 60% of the over 14 million votes cast. However, the then Nigeria's military president, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, annulled the 1993 elections. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was, in fact, a huge array of election malpractices virtually in all the states of the federation before the actual voting began. Local and foreign observers were unanimous in their submissions that, unlike previous elections that were marred by massive fraud, intimidation and killings, the June 12, 1993 presidential election was generally free, fair, peaceful, credible, transparent and unique as it was the first time the option A4 voting pattern was deployed, an open ballot system where voters vote openly, in contrast to a secret ballot where a voter's choice were confidential. Abiola was a man of the people. He brought a different perspective to the table and was able to connect with the people across divides. 
General Ibrahim Badamosi Babengida justified the annulment on the grounds that it was necessary to save the nation. He alleged that political activities preceding the election were inimical to peace and stability in the country and to avoid a likely military coup d'etat. Nigerians were not convinced by the explanations as nationwide protest followed news of the annulment. So it will continue off and on until the military release, release the result of the June 12 election and put the democratically elected president, who is myself, in charge of affairs. I won't go to war. I won't encourage my supporters to go to war. I will fight for peace. And we will get peace. But you see, we do not want the peace of a graveyard. A peace whereby somebody continues to ride on the rest of us with a gun. Days later, General Babangida was forced to step aside as military president after naming Chief Ernest Shonekan, a lawyer and industrialist from the southwest of Nigeria, as president of the interim national government. Chief Shone Khan's three-month administration was toppled in a palace coup d'etat on November 17, 1993 by General Sani Abacha, the then Chief of Defense Staff who became the 10th head of state of Nigeria. In spite of the military coup, Chief Abiola and his supporters continued the struggle. The people of this country went to polls on Saturday, June 12, 1993, and without let or hindrance, chose me as their president. Didn't they? Chief Abiola was arrested. Why are they arresting you? They are arresting me uh, on an allegation of felony, namely treason or something like that. And so where are you now? Are you in your car? I'm in my car now. Is it police who are with you in your car or are they escorted? Are they yes, the, the commissioner of police is in the car with me and my senior wife is in the car with me. And in prison for declaring himself president. In a fateful twist of events, General Abacha died on June 8, 1998 and was replaced by General Abdul Salami Abubakar. On July 7, 1998, Chief Abiola died as he was about to be released from incarceration. The chain of events that followed marked a turning point in Nigeria's political history. In an interview with Mohammed Babangida, son of former military president General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida with the Sun newspaper on 19th of October 2019, he revealed, quote, my brother and I were in Aso Rock presidential villa at the time. We were in the living room when he had done the recording. He came and said, I just nullified June 12. We both looked at each other and we looked at him and said, Why would you do that? And he said to us, You are too young to understand the intrigues of governance. And we said, but it is about you and your administration. And he replied, well, perhaps this is something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. End of quote. In another interview with the former military president, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babengida by Shola Oshunkeye, Taiwo Farutimi and Mike Ojo Obani Khan, in an attempt to ask the man himself of the untold story behind the annulment of the June 12 elections. He said, quote, Nobody gives me credit for conducting a free and fair election in the country. I have received every criticism from political figures like former president Olusegun Obasanjo, end of quote. The former military president said, Olusha Gumobasan just said to me, you had an opportunity. If that had gone through properly, history would have recorded it as your greatest achievement. End of quote. The June 12 election and subsequent annulment marked the beginning 
of a decades-long struggle to see the election result restored and democracy rehabilitated in Nigeria. Significantly, President Muhammad Wari's recognition of June 12 as the nation's Democracy Day undoubtedly stands out as a bold, just, historic, instructive, symbolic and resonating move to right the wrongs of the past and deepen the country's democracy. Frontline fighter in democracy struggle in Nigeria, human rights activist and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falona, described the declaration by President Mohamed Buhari as an unexpected pleasant surprise and spoke further on the June 12 mandate. It's a recognition of a very historical aspect of our life. I mean, when you talk of democracy in Nigeria, the struggle for the restoration of democracy, the June 12 presidential election in 1993 was a defining moment. Mm -hmm. That was when the Nigerian people decided that enough was enough in terms of military dictatorship. It was an election that defied geography and religion. It had no, it was an election that didn't consider religion or ethnicity, you know. Nigeria came together and spoke for democracy. Day in Nigeria is not just another public holiday, but a day to remind us of the true definition of democracy and oneness to stop the politics of ethnicity, religion, violence, rigging, and other electoral impunity. That is the challenge that must be overcome if Nigeria is to strengthen the ideals of sustainable democracy in honor and memory of the country's past heroes.